Welcome back and thank you for watching. Maternal mortality is unacceptably high. That comes straight from the World Health Organization. It says that globally about 287,000 women died in 2020 during and following pregnancy. Black mothers are more likely to die than white and Hispanic mothers, and we wanted to know why. CBS News Miami's Chelsea Jones spoke to a mom who says when she lost her baby, she almost lost her own life. Tonight, we examine the risks black mothers face and the solutions available right now that are here to help. It's a journey many women experience, but for Anya Cook, it was a long time coming. You see women go to doctor's appointments and they're so cute in their, their pregnancy bellies and in their outfits, and I didn't, I, I didn't think that I was worthy of that. That's because Anya suffered 17 miscarriages. They wanted to, it's, it's funny because sometimes that affects me um, when I hear babies, and sometimes it doesn't, and this is one of those times that it does, and it's weird. That's your little heart. <laughs> After an IVF implantation last year, she was pregnant. They finally made it past five weeks, the longest she'd ever carried a child. Then, on December 14th, that joy turned into more heartbreak. Anya lost her amniotic fluid, so she and her husband Derek went to the hospital for help. Because she was past 15 weeks, Florida's current cutoff for terminating a pregnancy, Anya told me the hospital sent her home. I said, what, so you can't do anything. You can't terminate my pregnancy. You can't, he said, no. She was discharged just one day later. I heard her body hit the, the, the toilet and I heard the water splash. It happened in the bathroom of a hair salon. Anya lost her daughter, Bunny. She then began to hemorrhage. But I ended up losing half the, half the blood in my body anyway. We've learned that black mothers are three times more likely to die from a pregnancy related issue than white mothers. The CDC tracks maternal mortality. So why is that the case? Researchers looking for answers traced it back to variation in the quality of health care, underlying conditions, structural racism and implicit bias. We have many studies that show that even medical residents who are in training have been trained to not take black people's pain as seriously, um, to not listen to black women when they're giving reports about symptoms, um, to not understand the complaints or the health history. That is why the Southern Birth Justice Network looks to create a safe space for black women to get what they want, what they need. Just this January, a mobile midwife clinic hit the road, making available holistic care, referrals to doctors, doula services, even recommendations for centers where different birthing options exist, like giving birth standing up, in water, and more. People need to be able to seek care, to not be turned away from doctors who are afraid of being sued or criminalized for just providing the standard of care. The mobile clinic is on the road and the Miami Birth Justice Initiative is a new program in the hospitals, working with them to give women those same options there. For Anya though, losing her baby nearly killed her physically and mentally. I was in a really bad place. I really contemplated suicide quite an extensive amount of time. But she is regaining her confidence in her body, believing one day she'll be able to carry her baby to term. My body can do this. I know my body can do this. It did before. Anya and her husband are going to try again. Now, those two new programs did launch this year, and if you want to get involved, they're always looking for volunteers. I'm Chelsea Jones, CBS News, Miami.